A new VR and XR headset possibly coming, and Google, one of the biggest companies in the world, being involved? Well, there might be pluses and minuses to that, but we'll get to that in just a minute. I gotta come to you today with a little bit of exciting VR news. I'm Jolly Julian, so let's dive in and let's virtual our reality! just got done reading an article recently by Tech Radar where they talked about two gigantic companies combining their efforts to create a new VR and XR headset that might be coming out as soon as the end of this year, no joke. Now realistically, I don't think it will quite make it in that time. I think it's going to probably be in the beginning to middle of next year, maybe even later next year, but there is possibility that we might get this brand new headset by Samsung and Google combining their efforts together at the end of this year. Now, what do we know about this potential headset? Well, first of all, it's going to be a combination of, again, like I said, Samsung, uh, incredible makers of uh, display technologies, and Google, basically the rulers of the earth, <laughs> actually the information capital of the world, are going to be combining to make this headset. So first of all, let's deal with that. Now, Samsung is a company with a great track record. They've been around a long time. They've created some incredible products over the years. Google, on the other hand, um, they've done some incredible things. They're a company that's going to be around for a long, long time. They're not going anywhere either. They've done incredible things in the information and uh, search engine world. However, their track record in virtual reality is less than stellar. They are known for starting and creating some projects and so forth in the VR space and then abandoning them much quicker than they probably should have before they had a chance to take root and really fly. I guess that's kind of a mixed metaphor because if you took root, then how could you fly? Because the roots would be holding you down and you wouldn't be able to... Anyway, I hope you know what I mean. The two other companies rumored to be involved in this with Samsung and Google are, of course, Qualcomm making their XR2 Gen 2 chips, which are powering the Quest 3 headset right now and the upcoming Quest 3S, um, as well as um, others by like Pico and so forth. They're gonna be providing the processors for this headset as the rumors state, but also there's another company involved that really has me kind of intrigued and that's Sony, who may be actually contributing their OLED screens to be a part of this project. Now that's very interesting to me when you consider that Samsung Samsung makes screens and displays and so forth. So I wonder how that's going to work. But if we can get OLED technology in this headset, that will be fantastic. Now that tells me something that might not be such great news, depending on how you look at it. And that is that this is probably not going to be an inexpensive headset. In fact, it is sounding more and more like this headset is going to be something that's going to try to compete more with the Apple Vision Pro end than it is the MetaQuest end. They're gonna be going a little bit more for that high-end experience. And I think that's wonderful in a lot of ways. I think Apple Vision Pro could certainly use a competitor on that higher end uh, because the $3,500 to $4,000 price tag is a little steep for most people on this planet. Maybe uh, Samsung and Google could get this down closer to the $1,000 to $1,500 range, which is rumored to be what they're aiming for. But don't expect to see this get down to the three to $500, $600 range that Meta has been dominating over the last few years. However, another rumor coming from Qualcomm is that their XR2 Gen 3 chip might be coming soon. Now, what is that going to mean for this project? Is there any chance that this could delay it? Because they might want to wait for that next generation chip to come out and get that implemented in there and try to beat Meta to the punch of getting another headset out with the next gen chipset in it. I don't expect that Gen 3 chip is coming quite soon enough. I, I, I don't know. I somehow still feel that that Gen 2 chip will probably be in this headset from Samsung and Google. My hope here is that Google doesn't abandon this project too soon, again, without giving it a chance to take root. But I think they're probably going to be a little more invested now because they've watched as Meta has really taken VR and brought it to more and more of the mainstream. It's still a long way from being completely mainstream, but the numbers have really grown with a rumored 20 million headsets in the Quest line alone sold over the last three to four years. That's not bad at all. I mean, that's comparable to the last Xbox console sales. So 
So that's really something. I mean, that is more than a blip on the radar now for people. So maybe Google has been watching that and will stick with this this time and bring this headset to fruition. I think we can all agree that competition is a good thing. Whether it competes more with Meta, more with Apple, or something in between, having a headset with those two companies on board could be wonderful. One of the things that has me concerned, though, is it's going to be a standalone headset, obviously, because it's going to have that Qualcomm chip in it. So what are they going to do for an ecosystem? Now, Google is pretty good with ecosystems. But boy, oh boy, Meta has a clear jump on the competition as far as having an incredible library for virtual reality and XR experiences. So I wonder if there's any chance, I doubt it, that they could actually partner with Meta in some way to have access to the Meta store. I don't know. I don't see that happening. I don't see Google wanting that. I don't see Meta wanting that. I doubt very, but you know, again, now I'm just talking fantasy, so I, I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. <gasps> Yeah, no, no, I'm not going to do that because I'd probably, I'd pass out well before we ever knew whether that was, but you know, we can dream. We can dream. That's part of what makes Jolly Julie and Jolly. So now let's talk a little bit about the rumored specs here. Now for that, I'm going to get right into Tech Radar's article here because I want to make sure not to get any of this wrong. So here are the rumored specs for this, at least some of the rumored specs. Apparently it will use micro OLED displays supplied by Sony instead of Samsung made screens. And according to the rumor, it'll be a 1.3 inch size with a 3840 by 3552 pixel resolution, a refresh rate of 90 hertz, and a max brightness of 1000 nits. For comparison, the displays in the MetaQuest 3 boast 2064 by 2208 pixels per eye, an experimental 120 hertz refresh rate, and 90 hertz standard refresh rate mode, which we all kind of know about. So what that's telling me is, is now, that's a little confusing because the article says, according to the rumor, it will be a 1.3 inch size. Does that mean per eye? I'm assuming that's per eye because they're saying they're boasting a 3840 by 3552 pixel resolution. That's pretty darn huge. Uh, whereas Meta has per eye 2064 by 2208. So that one's a little confusing to me. I'm not sure whether they're talking a single display, which I hope they're not. I think the, the dual display technology is gonna be much better, especially in a higher end. I'm going to assume that that's what they mean, that each of those will be that resolution. Beyond that, we don't know much about the specs at all. We don't know about battery size or battery life. We don't know storage capacities. We don't seem to have any knowledge in those areas. But I have a feeling that over the next few months, we might get more information about this potential new standalone virtual reality headset by two gigantic companies teaming up with Sony possibly on board and of course Qualcomm supplying the chip. This could be huge news for us and anyone who enjoys standalone VR. Now, as you probably know, I love both standalone VR and PC VR. I use both of them. I tend to use PC VR a little bit more, but I'm sure that this headset will also be able to be tethered or used through Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 to do PC VR experiences as well. You'd be crazy to make a headset these days that doesn't have that possibility as well. All right, that's all the news that we have on this for right now, or at least that I have, and that I got from Tech Radar and a couple of other sources out there. If you know anything else about it, please comment below. If you have any strong feelings about this, please comment below. Let me know, how do you feel about Samsung and Google possibly teaming up for this virtual reality and XR headset? Do you care? Are you going to be keeping your eyes on this? Is it going to keep you from purchasing a new headset until you find out more about this? Or are you going to jump in and get something like the Quest 3 or a Pico if they ever become available here in the States or whatever? All right. Also, please feel free to subscribe to this video if you enjoyed this at all. It really makes a difference. And hit that bell icon. You'll be notified when I come out with any more videos like this. There are a lot more videos coming your way. I'm Jolly Julian and uh, excited as always to talk about a potential new headset. Let's see if it comes to fruition. Google, don't drop the ball. Jolly Julian, and I'm out of here till next time.